In today's film, we're going to look at the four key scenarios where screenwriters are asked to do a ton of work for bugger all money. We're going to look at free rights, pre rights, specking whole scripts for free, and that old chestnut, the $1 option, which in my opinion should never be an option. Screenwriting sweat equity, let's get stuck in. So the first scenario where you're asked to do a ton of work is when you're pitching for an OWA, an open writing assignment. Typically, you'll have a general meeting with a producer or a creative exec, and then there's this magic moment where they say, we've optioned a newspaper article or a book, or we've got an idea for a movie, and we'd like to hear your take on it. And the first thing you feel is incredibly flattered that they're thinking of you, and then should come the reality that they probably had this conversation with up to 20 other writers. And you are, in fact, locked into a bake-off. To give you an example, my co-writer and I, we'd got on the radar of John Woo's company. They liked one of our scripts, and they said, listen, we're going to do a, a reboot of Hard Target. Like a semi-sequel, set in Thailand, what's your take? And that's all you've got. We've got to come up with an IOV which is what Terry Rossio and Ted Elliott called an idea of value. And the IOV that we gave them, because you can't hold back when it comes to sweat equity on getting a job, you've got to give them one killer idea. I read about Barry McGuigan, the boxer who killed another boxer in the ring in the 80s. And it's been stopped. We told them about Barry McGuigan. They said, well, one of the main characters is a, is a broken MMA fighter, killed his best mate in the ring, and he's now in Thailand fighting in these dirty backstreet fights when he gets tapped up to do the hard target thing. I'm putting together something special. A one-off fight in Miramar. Where's the ring? We're standing in it. A hundred square miles of jungle. He's hunted by these millionaires that if he survives, he gets a million dollars in rubies, uh, but more like he's going to be cut to pieces. I think we gave him a couple of the hunter characters. Why did you run home to mama? It was probably like three days of sweat equity, which paid off and the movie got made. Another example of an assignment that we won, State v Mandela, about this mass trial of Mandela and some of his fellow freedom fighters. We invested a lot of sweat equity reading and noting this very dense book. But at the end, we found this footnote. That the main barrister was actually part of Mandela's network. By taking this case, he sacrificed his freedom to save the lives of Mandela and the others. And that's the pitch that won us the assignment. And that's the story that became a movie. Amanda! So the two guidelines I give you when you're coming up with a take and you, you know, investing sweat equity is one, don't give them the blueprint to the whole movie. That's what you should get paid for. I mean, think of it in architectural terms. There's a property developer who wants to pop a new skyscraper in the city of London. You're the architect and you say, I want to build like one that looks like one of those old brick mobile phones. You've given them a very broad strokes some spiel about the mood of the building and the ethos of the building. But then if they say, well, how many floors has it got? And how big's the boardroom? The restaurant on the top floor, what does the glass look like in the sky bar? What kind of taps are we going to have in the executive bathroom? You see where I'm going with this. There's a big difference between the architect saying, oh, I want to do a mobile phone to actually being sucked into the job. And in screenwriting terms, the job is when you have to break the whole story to the point that if you were writing it on your own, you'd be ready to write it. DreamWorks were notorious for this in the 2000s. They had a policy. They said, we are not going to give any writer the job until they've broken the whole story. So they bring in 20 writers and ask them to break 20 stories. So they're getting all the benefit of all your storytelling prowess and all your time, which is your biggest commodity, and you're getting nothing in return. But the carrot is, if you do really well, we'll give you the job. A couple of years ago, some advertising creators put this campaign together, which was Say No to Spec. So I have a huge opportunity for you. Oh, okay. I don't have $1.75 in my budget right now just to oh. try one coffee willy-nilly to see okay. if I like it or not. That's why I would like a spec one. No. I definitely want you as a client, but I'm going to start providing my services day one, so you've got to start paying day one. That's just how businesses work. How am I going to know if I like the coffee if just, I don't get to try it first? Gotta trust. Don't give them the blueprint to the movie. Give them the blueprint of the blueprint to the movie. I would pitch them the main character and their dilemma. That act one dilemma, here's the character, their normal day life, and this happens. Then potentially you give them the middle of act two, that big twist, the turning point there, the point of no return, and then you shoot for the ending and just miss out all the other bathroom taps in between. 
Don't give them the bathroom taps. Don't go giving them the 14 beats, fleshing out set pieces down to the last motorbike and machine gun. And if you stick to that kind of format, you should be able to reduce the amount of work and sweat equity you put into a pitch to two or three days tops. Uh, and the second thing, I'd never give them pages. So if someone asks you for two pages on your idea or your pilot or your TV show, that's one thing. It's unfair for producers to ask for paper on ideas that they own unless they give you paper, as in folding paper. A producer says, let's spec it up. Why don't you spec a whole script for free? And it's sometimes very difficult to say no because a producer might say, oh, what's your take on this newspaper article about the FBI's unit that specifically investigates truck stop killers? So serial killers who murder prostitutes. This exists, this outfit. And they say, what's your take? You do two to three, four pages on it in your head. You don't give them the pages and then they develop it and then they develop it and then they get to the point and say, you know what? The studio aren't hearing pictures at the moment. And you're like, well, then why did you ask me to work one up? And they say, look, we love this idea and David Fincher, He's absolutely into it. Let's just spec it up and get it done and get the movie made. That is the most insidious line you will hear in your career. So the Anglo-Saxon expression for this is what we call taking the piss. When somebody asks you not just to give them the blueprint, but actually give you the building, to build the building for nothing in the hope that this sweat equity is going to pay off and we're all going to get the movie made. Yeah. It's not even sweat equity. This is more like spec equity where you're creating a script for no money, but you don't fully own it either. I will own all the rights to all the different training methods you've uh, we've gone through. I'm gonna teach you how to do stuff, right. and then you own my intellectual property. Exactly. Absolutely not ever would I do that. Why wow. would, who would ever agree to that? Here's an example of free rights. My writing partner and I, we delivered the draft to this mini major, at which point the director hit the roof. He said, this is so disrespectful that you have handed in this draft without giving me my director's draft, which is a free right. And we didn't realize that directors are entitled to free drafts before it goes into the buyer. And if you, a producer's been working with you, they're gonna have notes on it. They're not gonna want you to go straight into the studio and they're gonna crank it up and say, well, let's fix this. The Writers Guild says, don't do it. Don't do free rights. It's unfair. Yeah, it's unfair. In most cases, I think a lot of writers I know, they just suck it up and do it. So the fourth category of freebie screenwriting gigs is when the producer says, I love your project. I don't have any development money, but let me get it set up. Let me attach a director. Let's go to studios. You know, sweat equity, we're all in it together and I'm gonna pay you $1. Give me an exclusive on it. And I don't think a $1 option is an option because a $1 option is only as good as its exercise price. For an explanation of these terms, check out the seven deal points you need in your contract. It may be at the time that you make a $1 option that your career is down here. But let's say 12 months down the line, you got Fincher and Tom Cruise attached. 100 grand doesn't even cover what that script is worth. So not only are you taking nothing up front, you're limiting your upside. And you don't want to have to negotiate up front for what that exercise price would be. So the solution is to take what I would suggest is a shopping agreement. How legal they are is open to interpretation. I'll include an example of a shopping agreement. It's not legal advice. I've got to put the disclaimer. If you use the version of this and it, you come asunder, that's on you. Don't get tied down to an exercise price. Give them a shopping agreement. And again, make sure the words come back to you. So here are my five tips for not getting screwed. Number one, give them the blueprint of the blueprint, not the whole movie. Two, don't give them any pages. Three, if you are gonna spec something, only spec what you own. Make sure the words come back to you. Make sure there's a piece of paper that, that says that if you're putting in all this sweat, you're gonna get 100% equity. When it comes to producers and managers and writers and sweat equity, it's a bit like the respective positions of the chicken and pig in a bacon and egg sandwich. Only the pig is really committed. The producer has an idea, you know, they're like the chicken laying a little egg, but then you wanna lay lots of other eggs. If you are the pig, and as the pig, you've got to fully commit to creating this whole thing. You need to own the sandwich. That's what I'm saying. Do you do spec pork? Sorry? Do you do spec pork? Pork for free. No, sir. You bring a full pig over to my business now for free, chop it up, butcher it right there for me and my business associates. Then we eat the pork right there. We barbecue it in the boardroom, eat it. Then if we like it, then we'll talk. It's a no-go. Oh, damn. <laughs>
Scriptfella, out.